of the Lord. He's always there. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. Say, the Lord is my pillar. He's my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock. Oh, say, the Lord is my pillar. He's my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock. And whom I take refuge, for he is my shield. And the horn of my salvation, no, oh, he is my shield. And the horn of my salvation, no, oh, he is my shield. And the horn of my salvation, no. Oh, He's my high tower. He's my high tower. So I will call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I will call on the name of the Lord. For he's worthy to my to be praised. And I just want to let y'all know that God is my everything. My God. My God, God is my everything. Y'all clap your hands with us. Oh, God is. God is my everything. I said God is. God is. My everything. He's my joy. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope. He's my hope for tomorrow. Yeah. He's my rock. He's my rock in a weary land. A shelter. A shelter in a time of storm. God is. God is. God is. My everything. My everything. Oh, he's my hope. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock. He's my rock in a weary land. A doctor in the time of storm. Oh, God is. God is. God is. God is. Oh, God is. 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 Everything. Oh, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. I can't God get a witness. My everything is everything. My everything in the time of storm. My everything, and my everything, my everything. Rock in a weary land. My everything, and my everything, my everything. Rock in a weary land. My everything, my everything. My everything, he is my lawyer. My everything, my prince of peace. My everything, my burning bearer. My everything, my devil old terror. My everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. God is, 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 God is. God is, God is, God is, God is, God is, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, in the weary land, my everything, in the time of storm, my everything, doctor in the hospital, my everything, for every disease, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. My 
My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. He is my forever. My everything. He is my life. My everything. He is the blood. My everything. That set for me. My everything. 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 Oh God is. God is. God is. Can I give you the witness? My everything. Give me your everything. My everything. Let me see you wave your hand. My everything. Give me your everything. My 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 everything. God is. 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 We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you for sending down your Holy Ghost power. God, we thank you for the written word of God. We thank you for the rainbow word of God. We thank you for the apostles and the prophets. God, we thank you, oh God, for salvation finding its way down to little old us. God, we thank you for the knowledge of who you are. We thank you, oh God, for your love and redemption power. God, we thank you, O oh God, for the hope of eternal life. God, I pray right now for healing in the house. God, I pray for deliverance. God, I pray for victory. I pray for those who are, are bound, who are perplexed. God, I pray, God, that you lift their burdens, O oh God. Give them hope. Give them inspiration. Give them victory. God, we can do nothing without you, but with you we can do all things through you that gives us strength. God, strengthen us now. Strengthen us from on high. God, strengthen those who have bereaved. God, those who have lost loved ones. Strengthen those who are sick and afflicted right now. Strengthen those who are depressed and rejected. God, strengthen those who are oppressed. God, strengthen those who are behind bars. Strengthen those who are in hospitals. God, strengthen those right now that, that are, are in infirmaries right now. Strengthen those who, who feel like they have no reason to live. But God, send your help from on high. Send your help from the sanctuary. Send your ministering angels and spirits right now. Even those who are watching live, those who watch the replay later, God, those who watch on YOC TV, whenever it asks, God, I pray right now that they'll feel the healing virtue of God, that they'll feel the power of God reaching through their cell phone, reaching through their tablet, reaching through their laptop, reaching through their flat screen TV right now. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you are bound. You are defeated. God's people are victorious. And we shall give the name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. Come on all over the place. Give him glory. Give him glory right now. Come on, give him glory right now. Come on and give him glory right now. We don't come to church just to go through the formalities of having church. 
when we come to God's house to have an encounter with God. I want to feel God. I want to hear God. I want to feel when I left here that in fact that I was in the presence of Almighty God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. 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 My soul cries out, hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for God being God. Yes, sir. And besides him, there he is no other. Yes, sir. Was in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Yes, if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, I don't even want to even think about where would I be. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, where would I be? I don't even want to think about where I would be. Thank you, Jesus. Because as far as I was, that was bad enough. But without God, I would have been worse than that. So I don't even want to think about where would I be. But I thank God for where I am and where God is taking me. Come on, somebody. Thank God. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. But thank God where he's taking me. And sometimes you got to get a glimpse of where God is taking you. Thank you, Jesus. And realize, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Plans to prosper you, bring you to, to give you hope and expect it in. We thank God for salvation and redemption. An opportunity to come in his house and to worship him. Yes, sir. Amen. It's not intent to be before you long. Amen. We apologize for those on live stream. Amen. We did a test run. It was time to go live. Everything went wrong. But God is still God. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe when the devil is messing, he what they said they call him the prince of the air. Yes, sir. I believe he messing because God wants to give somebody victory today. And if we get this kind of reshape our minds and reshape our focus and start interceding, understand we in spiritual warfare, that there's somebody in this church there's somebody online that need to hear what god got to say today thank you jesus yes, and the devil tried to block it he tried to hinder it but thank god thank you jesus we claiming victory right now yes, sir. we got members in our own church that are traveling because of bereavement we got members in our own church um having uh, side effects of, of vaccinations we got members in our church that are sick from vaccine and recovering from surgery but we're praying right now that the word of god right now that the power of god that is in this house thank you jesus will reach you right where you are hallelujah hallelujah Woo! thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Engage in spiritual warfare. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We engage in spiritual warfare. And I laugh. A man of God will announce to thousands of people that, that God spoke to him to bless our church. And the first Sunday after the announcement, we ain't even able to go online. So, so what does that let me know? Thank you, Jesus. The devil is upset. Thank you, Jesus, because we're getting ready to take this glorious gospel to the masses. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me in here? That God has given us something that's worth to share, that the world needs. And thanks be to God, by the help of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks be to God, and with the help of God. Thank yes, you, Jesus. This word will go forth. Yes, this gospel will be preached. This plan of salvation will be declared. This doctrine will be affirmed. Healing will be transferred and transmitted in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Y'all don't hear me in here? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let's go to the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, been sitting on this message for uh, a couple weeks and things didn't work out where I get to share it, so you might find it out of sync, but I believe the word is the word. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to let the word do, amen, the work. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, now in this that I declare to you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. We just had communion, Good Friday. Amen. 
And uh, this message has nothing to do with communion, but it has everything to do with communion. For first of all, when you come together in the church, yes, sir. I hear that there be divisions among you. And I partly believe it. Yes, sir. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Yes, sir. When you come together, therefore, in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before others his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. So he said, what? Have you done houses to eat yes, and sir. to drink in? Say so. Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? Yes, sir. I praise you not. Skipping down to verse 33. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry or wait one for another. My God. If any man hunger, he said, let him eat at home. Yes, sir. That you come not together unto condemnation. And he said, the rest will I set in order when I come. Yes, sir. And just for uh, a few minutes this Sunday morning, uh, post-Easter, I guess, message, don't eat without me. My God. Don't eat without me. Father, give us the ability to share this word as you gave it to us. Help us to give it to your people. Don't let us add to it. Don't let us take anything away from it. Don't let us dilute it or diminish it. But God, speak to your people as you have spoken to your servant. Send an anointing that makes priests and easy. Shift the atmosphere. Make your presence known. Throw your weight around in the place. Yes, sir. And we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray and all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Uh, Paul uh, writes to the church at Corinth, uh, as he said, to put things in order. Uh, we, we, let me just interject this. People think you're going to find a perfect church, but the reason we have a Bible or predominantly a New Testament is because we had church issues. Yes, sir. <laughs> church problems that the apostles had to write letters thank you Jesus to, to set some things straight so one at a time you have people and people are still human and people are still flesh and people still have their individual personalities understand you're not going to find a perfect church uh, until we get to heaven Yes, sir. And thank you Jesus and if you find a perfect church when you show up you just now ruin its perfection. Yes, Thank sir. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because understand, we all growing and we all are trying to, to get better. So just understand that that the, the Bible, the, the reason we have a first and second Corinthians is because first the Corinthian church was a jacked up church. Thank you, Jesus. It was a flawed church. But thank God for the apostles. And some people don't like order, they don't like structure, but thank God that God anoint certain men and women of God, amen, with a knowledge and a revelation of God to put structure in the house and to put order and to put some things together. And so we thank God that it's because of the flaws of Corinth, and we thank God for the anointing of Paul to address those things in Corinth, and those letters are preserved that we know how to do things in the church today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, so there's going to be new challenges, new technologies, new problems, and God has put apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors, teachers, to, to what to continue, what to bring unity to the body, to, 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 to bring us together, and for the perfecting of the saints, the perfecting, not the, the perfect saints, but the perfecting, amen, of the saints. Thank you, Jesus. We are being perfected. We are being sanctified. We are growing what towards uh, uh, maturity. So here in this particular uh, passage, Paul, in writing to the church of Corinth, understand that he's talking about the Lord's Supper. Some call it the Eucharist. Some call it Holy Communion. Some call it the Lord's Supper. Uh, but it's to commemorate the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples before his what betrayal and uh, crucifixion uh some some uh, the scripture says as often as you eat but some take it daily there's some people go to mass and they have communion every day before they go to work or every evening after they get off there's some who do it every sunday 
is a part of their worship. They come around, take communion, just like we come and give offering or do uh, whatever. There are some churches that the main event, if you will, of the service is communion. Here in the evangelical apostolic pinnacle church, the highlight of the service is the word of God. But if you go to some of your reformed denominations, thank you, they'll do a little 10-minute homily because the main event or the climax of the service is what holy communion. There are other churches, Baptists and other denominations, it's every what first Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. You got to be in your regale, you got to be in uniform, because they're gonna have foot washing and communion on first Sunday. Some churches said first Sunday's too much. We're gonna do it on fifth Sunday. Some do it special times. We're kind of in the special times category. Thank you, Jesus. We'll do it Christmas and Easter and, and, and around Pentecost or after convocation. But the scripture doesn't necessarily dictate the frequency. It just said that, that you do it oft. And then when you do it, you do it with respect. And it's not just snack time. Thank you, Jesus. There's some people that look forward to communion during service because they figure it's snack time. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give me some juice and some crackers, and that's going to hold me over to after service. That ain't what it's about. Thank you, Jesus. They understand that when we take communion, it is to reverence and to respect the broken body of Jesus and the, the shed blood, the shed blood, what for our remission of sins and the broken body that dealt with everything else, our healing, our ministry mental, our physical, uh, all of our ailments and disease, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the scripture said, well, by his stripes that we are what healed. Thank you, Jesus. Understand, some churches, they share off the same loaf of bread. Some denominations, they share the same cup. Or the priest has to drink after everybody, after it's all over. We don't do that over here. Thank you, Jesus. We give you little separate cups, and we leave you little, little separate wafers, and you can peel it off and do what you got to do and then dispose of it after it's over. There are some that actually use wine. Because the scripture said wine. The others say, no, it's fruit of the vine. Some use grape juice. It really doesn't matter because it all is what's symbolic of the shed blood of Jesus. There are some who even believe in what's called transubstantiation. Transubstantiation is the belief that the, the bread and the wine literally becomes the body and the blood of Jesus. That, that, that somehow miraculously that when you actually take on communion it's not symbolic of the broken body and the shed blood but that you're actually literally digesting the broken body and drinking the shed blood of Jesus. But understand, my brother and sister, uh, we believe that God still heals through, thank you, Jesus, his broken body. We still believe, thank you, Jesus, that through his shed blood, there is remission of sins. Bible tells that Jesus even talked about it before communion. He said in John chapter 6, verse 53, he said, Whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. Jesus was not teaching cannibalism as some, some people think that he's talking about literally eating his body and his flesh. But he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do what? In remembrance of me. And it goes on to say, this cup in the New Testament in my blood, this do as you oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Understand, in order for there to be a old in the New Testament, the testator had to die. When Jesus died and he shed his blood, he issued in a new dispensation of grace. Old Testament, you messed up. You might have got struck dead at the moment. But thank God, New Testament grace, God, as we said last Sunday, gives you what? Space to repent. He gives you an opportunity to be Warn, thank you. She gives you an opportunity to, to make corrections, but understand even in New Testament, grace delays the wrath of God to give us a chance to repent. But if we fail to take advantage of the repentance and the opportunity that God gives us, the Bible still declares that the wages of sin is still death. But thanks be to God that the gift of God is still what? Eternal life. So you got a choice, my brother and sister. You're going to work to go to hell. Or you're going to believe God and accept the plan of salvation, accept his shed blood, accept his redemption, and receive what? Eternal life. The choice is still yours. Understand, communion is, a, is about fellowship with God, but also fellowship with 
with each other. Yeah, you can do it by yourself, but it's better when we come together as a body. Yeah, you can worship by yourself, but it's something about worshiping together. Thank you, G. That's why the scripture said one can chase a thousand, but two could put 10,000 to fight. It's exponential power when we come together. And that's why it says when, when two or three what come together in my name, he said, what? There I am in the midst. The Bible even talks about it. Thank you, G. When you get cold, it's good to have somebody else to warm up beside. Thank you, G. It talks about a threefold cord that's not easy broken. Sometimes you need somebody to help you to get through here. You need somebody that's going to encourage you and to pray for you. And sometimes I don't come to church with a praise. I know you tell me, bring your praise, but sometimes I leave my praise at home. Sometimes I ain't got no praise. I don't feel like praising. Tell you the truth, I really don't want to be here. I didn't really even want to see you. Didn't really want to deal with you. But thank God, somebody else comes in with a praise. Somebody else comes in with a prayer. Somebody else comes in with the word of God. And I, my attitude changes. My heart melts. And I leave and I say, you know what? I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to hang in here just a little while. Under Understand? That's why the devil always wants to separate the sheep from the flock because he understands that even though they're sheep, sheep together can defeat the wolf. But when it's a one-on-one -on -one with the sheep and the wolf, thank you, Jesus, the sheep ain't got much of a chance. So that's why it's important for you to have a flock that I can look out for you. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in the collective body. What you ain't got, I got. What you ain't got, somebody else got. And when we bring it all together, together we have a what a complete meal we have an opportunity to, to do things better together are you praying with me in here rather than a potluck thank you Jesus everyone brings something thank you Jesus to talk about potluck everybody brings something uh, and everyone eat together at the same time but in this this passage of the, the talking about communion it is believed that it was more like lunchtime in the cafeteria I got kids that are in school yeah, we, we, we eat at the same place. Thank you, Jesus. But perhaps at different times, and perhaps some bring their own lunch. I remember uh, my, my, my friend, his mom would hook him up every day. Thank you, Jesus. And thank God because he was a friend, he would give me some of the chips and, and some of the sandwich that he had. Thank you, Jesus, because he liked what I had, and I liked what he had, and we would switch up every once in a while. And so here, the communion that Paul is addressing was similar to that, 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 well, similar but not similar to that lunchtime analogy in that they were supposed to be eating at the same time. They were supposed to be eating together, but you had the wealthy who perhaps did not work or got out work early who were able to bring, thank you, Jesus, a nice meal to communion. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the poor person who had to work longer hours got there late, thank you, Jesus, but maybe didn't have the same meal. Put it this way, you, you came to the party, all the food gone, they didn't have Outback, and you coming with a bologna sandwich. Yet, yet we supposed to be family, yet we all supposed to be equal. Now you fool, now you drunk, you didn't have a good time, and now here I show up. Thank you, Jesus. The party over, the food been eaten, and we thought this was supposed to be what? Holy communion. We thought that this was supposed to be what? A gathering of the saints, what? To come together. And so Paul is saying, thank you, Jesus, that the poor are now what? Getting the leftovers. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, that, 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 that they're only getting the, the scraps that's left off the bone. They only, they, they, the, the Kool-Aid all been drinking, drunken, and now that, that little, little bit that's at the bottom that you have to turn the bowl up. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Now they got to try to scrape the, the bowls in order to eat. And Paul is saying, how are you a family? How are you respecting God? How are you a community when the haves are enjoying and the have-nots? Thank you, Jesus, only getting the scraps and the leftovers and not being able to enjoy the feast of the Lord. So Paul had to send a letter of reprimand. He had to send a letter of correction to say that's not what what it's about. He said, said when you come together, have the decency what to, to wait for each other and have what the decency what to eat 
together. How is it communion and there's no community? How is there communion? How is there community without what unity? How is it that something that's supposed to bring the body together is actually being used as an instrument of division to cause classism and to, to exploit those who have and those who don't have? But if you're going to have something to worship God and yet it makes people feel less than or feel like they're not worthy, you better question whether or not it's God or whether it's something that you put in place. Thank you, Jesus. To, to, that's not of God. Are you praying with me in here? He said, so, so if you're going to come here to have a party, get fat and eat, thank you, Jesus. Get the itis. He said, I'd rather that you eat at home. I, he said, I'd rather if you're going to come together as a body and hurt folk, I'd rather that you don't come together at all because us coming together should be to edify. It should be to build up. It should be to strengthen. I shouldn't come to church and leave church feeling worse than I did when I got here. Thank you, Jesus. If your church makes you feel worse, then you need to check yourself or check your church. But when I come to the house of God, understand God uses people to pump me up, to strengthen me, to embolden me. It's where I get my tank full. It's where I get my recharge. It's where I get my reviving and my refreshing. Can I get a witness in here? Ah, don't eat without me. Thank you, Jesus. Think about Thanksgiving. We treat how Paul talks about the, the disrespect and the irreverent attitude that people have. And there's a way of thinking about it. I thought about this is similar to how we treat Thanksgiving. We say Thanksgiving is about giving God thanks. Most people don't think nothing about God the whole day. Thank you, G. They don't talk about God. They don't mention God. They don't say no prayers. They don't go around the table, say, what are you thankful for? What do you hear on social media? It's about, boy, I'm about to get my grub on. Boy, I'm about to put a hurting on this plate. Boy, I wonder how many pounds I'm going to gain. Boy, I wonder how many slices and pie I'm going to eat and how many pounds of turkey. We to turn Thanksgiving a day of giving thanks uh, into a day of what gluttony thank you Jesus don't don't call it Thanksgiving when you basically calling it a, a gluttony feast thank you Jesus but if you're gonna eat make sure you give God praise if, if you're gonna do it it's okay have a good meal it's good bring the whole family together but don't call it Thanksgiving if you don't intend to give thanks to God and so here that's what was going on here these people were eating good in the name of God and God won't know where in it and so God said, before you throw a feast to say it's unto me, but then I'm nowhere in it. I'd rather you cancel your feast or make sure that I'm included in what you're doing. Can I break it down? It's no need to have church if God ain't in church. What good is praise and worship and God never got the glory? What good is your preaching if the gospel is never proclaimed? What good is it to pay tithes and offering and have a building and have worship service? What good is it to have a live stream and nobody be touched? Uh, nobody hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shut the church down. But if we're going to keep the church open, if we're going to continue to serve, let's make sure God is the center of attention. Make sure the gospel is being and preach make sure we show love we show kindness then we help our brothers and sisters can i get a witness in here Woo! thank you g we're gonna be the church let's be the church let's not be frauds and phonies thank you jesus men please us fill in our pockets thank you jesus seeking popularity but let us preach the whole gospel to every man let us preach the whole gospel to every creature let us preach the whole gospel to every man regardless of their walk regardless of their background regardless of their proclivities regardless of their addictions regardless of their weakness there is no uh, uh there's no one exempt from the shed blood but in fact the dirtier you are the greater the need for the remedy and I believe the scripture said to the utmost Jesus save anybody out there that still believe Jesus can save anybody from anything Woo, thank God for salvation so here we look at this word thank you Jesus the Lord suffer us the fact to be holy communion then we have to include everyone not made to feel less than or excluded. Not made to feel left out or left behind. Uh, what good is it? You got McDonald's and I got Outback. Thank you, G, but we family. Thank you, G. If I got, you got. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. If I'm eating good, <laughs> by God, if I got something to share, I'm going to make sure what you eat good, too. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And some of us are so content uh, eating good in the house, uh, but yet we got family members and friends that are outside starving. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. We eating good. Thank you, Jesus. Good church. <laughs> we got our praise on. <laughs> but yet the people in the grocery store, people in the restaurant, <laughs> people that you go to work with tomorrow, <laughs> that they have no idea what you had to eat today. <laughs> and the question is, how much longer not yet, are you going to continue to eat and get fat <laughs> and let your brothers and sisters stay out in the streets starving for what the word of God. It ain't ought to be, it ought not to be amongst the saints of God. But God wants us as freely as we receive. <laughs> he wants us what to freely give. We freely receive the gospel. We must freely give the gospel. We freely receive love and grace. Thank you, Jesus. We didn't do a background check on you. We didn't check your resume. We didn't check resume. We don't see how many dead bodies literally and figuratively you have left along the way. But thanks be to God. God looked beyond that foolishness. God looked beyond that mess and said, I'm going to save you anyhow. I'm going to come from heaven down. Robe myself in flesh. Get dirty myself. What in order what to clean you up? Can I get a witness in here? Almost done here. This might get a little weak. <laughs> but thank you, G. Understand. <laughs> ah, when the scripture said, wait and share. Or oh, he said, what he did at home. Understand. The Lord, some time ago, began to speak to me out of this text. <laughs> he said, people are starving in the streets. <laughs> and while we're getting fat and drunk in church, <laughs> we're getting drunk off the spirit. <laughs> we're eating fat from the word. <laughs> we're enjoying the fellowship with the brothers and sisters. <laughs> we're having what? Good church. <laughs> it was a such word as good church. <laughs> uh, we're getting so much good word and good worship and good fellowship and good ministries that many of us got so much that now we're getting fat and we're beginning what? To throw it away. <laughs> we began to take the house of God for granted. <laughs> we'll come to church whenever we want to. <laughs> we'll miss a couple here and there because we take for granted that the doors of the church is going to be open <laughs> and that the word of God is going to be preached. <laughs> but understand my brother and sister, there's going to be a time when dinner is over. Ah, that the supper time is going to come to an end and that the doors of the church that have been open will one day come to a close. <laughs> and you better make sure uh, you got the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ uh, while you had the opportunity. Can I get a witness in here? Understand, my brothers and sisters, that while we're getting fat, there are friends and family members that are thirsty. Thank you. They're dehydrated spiritually. There are people in the streets that are starving, seeking words. That's why they're overdosing on drugs. Uh, that's why we're caught up in perversion and promiscuous ways. Uh, they're seeking love in all the wrong places but yet you know a God that said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so while they're out there turning tricks and you know Jesus you'd rather judge them for turning tricks than to introduce them to your Jesus that don't require you to turn tricks no more can I preach in here just for a minute? <laughs> and so understand, my brother and sister, we can't force anybody to come to church. <laughs> we can't force anyone to eat the word of God. <laughs> we can't make anybody drink the blood <laughs> for the remission of sins, nor can we make anybody eat the, the bread, <laughs> which is the broken body. <laughs> but my brother and sister, we are obligated <laughs> to invite them over to dinner <laughs> and to offer our hungry and thirsty brothers and sisters something to eat and to drink. That's why in Luke chapter 14 and the Lord said unto the servants go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. He said what that my house may be filled. God doesn't want his church to be empty when there's good bread being baked. God don't want his church to be empty when there's good wine being served. God don't want 
but his church empty where his presence is met and, and people are being delivered. Can I get a witness in here? That's why in Luke chapter 14, he said, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city. And he said, and bring them hither. He said, bring in the poor. He said, bring in the maid. Bring in the halt. Bring in the blind. Understand, he didn't say, go bring in the educated. He didn't say, bring in the perfect people. He didn't say, bring in the healthy people. He didn't say, bring in the sinless people. But he said, go get the folk that got handicaps. Go get the folk that don't know how to live and bring them into the house uh, that my house may be filled. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, so I come out to tell somebody uh, we can't assume uh, because of their lifestyle. Uh, we can't assume uh, because of their exterior appearance. Uh, we can't assume uh, because of their background, their race, uh, their criminal record, uh, their sexual orientation or tendencies. Uh, that they won't accept the invitation. It's up to us to invite and leave it up to God for them to decide whether or not they're going to accept the invitation. Can I get a witness here? And let me say this to whom God invites to dinner. We got to understand this ain't my house. This is God's house. Have you ever been to somebody's house and they had your over for dinner uh, and they happen to invite somebody else uh, that you don't get down with uh, y'all ain't speaking to uh, you don't like them uh, who are you to go uh, to the owner of the house uh, and say well if you want me here uh, they got to go uh, I'm here today to tell you uh, you don't have the right uh, you don't have the authority uh, to tell God uh, who he can have over for dinner. Uh, he can call who he want. Uh, he can invite who he want. Uh, he said, I got some sheep uh, that you don't know nothing about. Uh, I got some uh, that family members uh, you never met. Uh, I got some family members uh, that don't dot every eye uh, across every T. Uh, I got some family members. Uh, they are some swindlers. Uh, they are some hustlers. Uh, he said, I got some family members uh, that are fornicators and adulterers. Uh, he said, I got some family members uh, that are foul mouth and perverted. Uh, he said, I got some family members uh, and some are LG, uh, some are BNT, uh, but they still my kinfolk. Uh, and when I open up my house for dinner, uh, my house is open up uh, to all of my family. Uh, and you that are there, uh, you don't have the right uh, to tell me uh, who's invited uh, over to dinner uh, at my house. Uh, that's why Jesus said, uh, my house shall be called uh, the house of prayer uh, for all people. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, are you glad you got an invitation? Uh, are you glad uh, they didn't make you go through security? Uh, are you glad uh, you didn't have to apply? Are you glad you didn't have to show them how much money you had? But the fact that you got an invitation to come over to dinner, thank God I heard the word say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden. Life. Can I get a witness here? Just because they're busy now. Just because they're not interested now. Just because they say no. We as men and women of God, we have to say come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Somebody say it. Somebody say it. 
I heard Johnson Oatman say, oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the word that he said. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Somebody say, there's someone out there. They're hungry and thirsty, looking for the living and red. They're looking for the bread of heaven. They're looking for new life. A reason to live. They're looking for a purpose. And the question is, can I come over for dinner? And my answer is, you don't have to clean up. You don't have to get right. You can wash up once you get here. You can clean up once you get here. You can change your clothes once you get here. But come on out the streets. Come on out the bars. Come on out the clubs. Come on out the prisons. Come on out the streets. There's a good bread at 5017 Orchid Lane. There's good bread in the city of refuge. There's good bread in the house of God. You don't have to perish. You don't have to starve. Meals are being served daily. Come on in and eat. Somebody say, yeah. Somebody say, yeah. Hallelujah. Come over here. Do you need something to eat? I may not have much, but the little I have. If I got two crackers, you got one cracker. If I only got one cracker, you get half a cracker. But whatever I got, I'm willing to share it. I'm not going to let you die. I'm not going to let you starve. I'm not going to let you perish. I'm not going to let you go to hell. Somebody say, yeah. The title of the message, the word said, don't eat without me. I'm not telling the saints to stop eating. I'm not telling the saints to cut back on your food. Not telling the saints to cut down on your wine not telling the saints to cut down on coming to church but I want you to focus on the latter part of the statement don't do it without me wait for me I'm on my way give me a few minutes I'm coming over for dinner somebody say it somebody say it I'm coming home prodigal son I'm coming home tell daddy kill the fatty can tell daddy get the wine ready tell daddy set the table tell daddy put out the silverware tell daddy prodigal sons prodigal daughters they come to themselves and they're on the way home they ain't got here yet but they're coming around the corner I'm looking out the window in the spirit world I'm looking out the window city of refuge some sons about to come home some daughters about to come home let's get ready time to eat it's harvest time the harvest is right but the labors are few pray to the Lord send in more labor can I get a witness here so I come by to tell somebody dinner is ready dinner is now being served come on in and get something to eat what's on the menu preacher is it fried chicken no is it tilapia no is it barbecue rib no thank you gee is it lamb chops no is it pork chops that would be nice but that ain't what we're serving but I believe I believe God is serving healing come over for dinner he's serving hope 
It's time for dinner. He's serving faith. Come on to dinner. He's serving salvation. Come on to dinner. He's serving deliverance. Come on to dinner. He's serving victory. Come on to dinner. He's serving purpose. Come on to dinner. He's serving prosperity. Come on to dinner. He's serving love. Come on to dinner. He's serving acceptance. Come on to dinner. He's serving forgiveness. Come on to dinner. He's serving new mercy. Come on to dinner. Somebody say it. Somebody say it. It's time to eat. Dinner is being said. Don't eat without me. Do whatever you're doing, Jesus. Don't do it without me. I want to be in your will. I want to be in your way. I want to be in your plan. I want to be in your heart. Somebody say it. Thank you. Don't eat without me. Woo! Don't be selfish. Don't be greedy. Don't be elitist. Self-righteous. This is for me and my car. You don't have the right or the authority to eat here with us understand you don't deserve an invitation to dinner in God's house either but thanks be to God he invited me anyway he's inviting you right now thank you cheese I see a praise over there I wish there was another praise in the place thank God you got the invitation thank God you've been eating good but we also no different you would do in the natural Mr. Brown last week, he not here today. He said, he said, what's a good place to eat after service? Elder I'm pointing you out. Elder said, I don't know. <laughs> but he went over to the first lady and said, you can go here, 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 here. What does that mean? There are people out there now. Where can I get healing? Where can I get hope? Where can I get love? Where can I get over my depression, anxiety, my isolation, my, my, my loneliness? Where can I get over my suicidal thought? Where can I get over my proclivities and my addictions? I ain't going to point you out, preacher. But let us not be like Elder Lewis. I don't know. We got to be like First Lady. Said This scripture says, by his stripes you are healed. This word says, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. This word says, come unto me all you that labor. You got to be able to have a whole Rolodex of scriptures in the word of God. To say if nothing else, come follow me to my father's house. There's good bread being served at my father's house. Come to the city of refuge. A place where you what can begin again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't eat without me. Who's missing from the table in your house? What co-worker ain't got here yet? What family member ain't got here yet? Thank you, Jesus. What, what loved one that's trying to find their way? They, 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 their GPS messed up. And they, they made some wrong turns. But just because they made some wrong turns and because they're off schedule don't mean they ain't trying to what rerouting. Thank you, G. Redirecting to come to the house of God. They got the address wrong. They went to the wrong place. But God is saying today is your opportunity and invitation to come. Somebody today, my brother and sister, Jesus paid for the meal. He said, can't let it go to waste. Thank you, G. He said, I got plenty of food. When the, the parable said that, my God, he had planned a wedding. He had had to cater. Some of y'all been married, y'all book places, caterers. 
You planned for 200, 100 showed up. And rather than pay the extra, you said, I'd rather just tell anybody in the hallway, come on in here and eat. I'd rather the food be eaten than the food go to waste. My brother and sister, today we must have the same desire to say, it's too much good word, too much anointing, there's too much love, there's too much hope and healing in the house to continue to allow the seats to go empty and the food go to waste. Thank you, Jesus. But we got to make up our mind, invite whoever we can, whenever we can, wherever we can, come to my father's house. Thank you, Jesus. There's good bread, there's good wine, there's love. What are you saying? Father's house, go ahead with it. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life. Thank you, Jesus. Dreamed and visit shattered. You're all broken inside. Come on, congregation. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Yes. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together Perhaps you're watching again. online, keep singing. You're watching online. In case your situation you straight away in the pandemic has turned you straight away upside from the down. Perhaps and you're in all that you've done in between is now on You don't have the a church ground. home. You don't have a pastor or yes, sir. You don't have to stay. You've been struggling mentally, emotionally, spiritually. In the shape that you're in. But I'm here today to tell you. The potter wants, wants to put you back to together. To put you back together We've never again. done this before, but if you want to be a, oh, the a virtual member, wants online to member, put you back the telephone number is there. You can call us in Texas, 804-238-7152. Oh, case you have fallen by you can the wayside of life. At that number, you can connect Dreams with us. And Email us at cityrefugeandlife.com. You can visit our website, cityrefugeandlife.com. And there you can connect with this ministry. Somebody here rain. today, you need prayer. Oh, you need deliverance. You're rain. hungry. To put and you, you need bread. Together you heard the word, you heard the worship, but now you want seconds. You, you want a doggy bag, you want something to take home with you. We, 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 we do eat in and we do carry out. Thank you, Jesus. We want you to eat while you're here. But we also want you to get you enough to carry out. And all that you somebody out there today. You need the word, you need the worship, you need a church home. We extend you an invitation to come. You don't have don't to eat stay without me. In the shape that Hold you're up. in. I'm on my way. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, you, you are broken. Yes. Stop have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need me. You need to accept him right now. Stop by. Repent of your sins. The I denounce my old way of life. Whatever that old way of house, life is. Yeah, him in the I want to take him on my water baptism. I want to be life. washed. My friend. We don't eat without washing our hands. To put you by the word, we're washed in baptism. Oh, Not to clean it up flesh, but to answer the good conscience towards God. To put you back and then God said, I'm going to fill you with my spirit. Again. Oh, the power of the I'm going to put you 2 Corinthians 5 21. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
God became man so that man could become like God. Y'all didn't hear me. God became man so that man could become like God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You couldn't reach him. But thank God he reached down. I couldn't climb high enough to get to him. But thank God he was, was on high as to send it down. Somebody said if you have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. If you have to reach what way down, Jesus will pick you up. Turn your around. Place your feet on solid ground. The promise is unto you. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Go ahead, walk, sing it. Go. Oh, oh, the part of one to put you back together again. Oh, the part of one to put you back together again. Oh, the part of one to put you back. everybody take this home with you have you tried jesus he's all right have you tried my jesus he's all right have you tried jesus he's all right have you tried my jesus he's all right have you tried jesus he's all right have you tried my jesus he's all right have you tried jesus He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. 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 Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. 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 We thank God for the word of the Lord coming from Pastor Travis this morning. Was it don't eat without me? We encourage you to take advantage of the different ways to give your tithes and offering. And we pray that the Spirit of the Lord will keep you and protect you as you make your way home safely. Remember the word of the Lord. We don't want to come into the house of the Lord and not give God glory. We don't want to come and anyone leave full, like leave empty, but everybody should leave full. 
We pray the blessings of the Lord upon you. God, take us home safely. We pray, God, that you'll restore our pastor. Give him strength, God. Replace the virtue he poured out. And let everyone know that there is a Savior, God. That they can come before the feast of the Lord. We got the table to spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Keep us in your care. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Oh, he's all right. 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 All right, all right. You tried Jesus, he's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right.